everybody, it's Light, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing Mystic Destiny Serendipity of Anne's, and we're doing Show's Route. Show's Route is the only route available, which I wasn't aware, which I wasn't made aware of in the last video since I'm going to this game blind, but I'm pretty excited because I just purchased the, that route today, so without further ado, let's just get this, let's, let's get started. Okay. Okay. I quickly stroll through them and see that they're all for my dad. Hey, sweetie, I just got back from Budapest a few hours ago. I'm sorry I missed a chance to see you off on your first day of university. I brought back some souvenirs. There's something for you, but it's a surprise. I'll give it to you the next time you're home. Let me know when you have some free time. I'll send a car for you. We can have a nice family meal together. Have you seen your mother? Have you seen your mother? I tried calling her, but her phone seems to be off. Kayo says she hasn't seen your mother since she went to meet you. Did she tell you where she was going to meet? Did she tell you where she was going after meeting you? She hasn't sent any emails to me. I'm worried. Let me know if she told you anything as soon as you can. Guys, I don't know who our dad is. I don't. I don't know. Okay. I feel like a bucket of ice cold water was suddenly poured over me. A heavy weight settles in my stomach. I think I'm going to be sick. I can't stop my hands from trembling. My phone falls from my hand and hits the floor. Startled by the sound, the guys snap their heads up, at, uh, their heads up and look at me. Princess? I, I sit there unable to say anything. My whole body is shaking. I don't know how I could forget. No, I knew. Of course I knew. I knew. I just didn't want to think about it. Didn't want to remember. Not again. Never again. But the memories of that night under the full moon. I'm just reading words that I don't even see. Okay. Under the moon are flooding back into my mind once more. Oh no. Not here. Not again. I can't stop it. The memories I tried my best to ignore are coming back in flashes again. My head is throbbing painfully. How will I ever tell dad what that woman did? Is he even your dad, though? Is he even your dad? Would he believe me? Does he know the truth? My thoughts jumble together into one incoherent mess. All I can imagine is how horrified my dad will be if I tell him the truth. And if I don't, he'll think something's wrong, that, he, that she's been kidnapped or killed. Oh, man. Okay. I can hear distant voices calling out to me, but the ringing in my ears is getting worse. I need air. I get up, my feet unsteady, and I try to walk to the door. I can hear someone calling out to me, but the ringing in my ears is making everything jumbled. Hey, princess, what's wrong? I can't even tell who's talking to me. A sharp pain suddenly pierces through my skull. Ah! Ah, oh, bro, the music. I grab my head in a desperate attempt to stop everything. My body is starting to feel hot. A bright light forms around me. Oh! I screw my eyes shut, hoping that somehow it will all stop, but they're forced open. Ah, oh, they're green! Uh, okay, no, not again! Princess! Hearing the desperate tone in Sho's voice, I open my eyes. They're all green. He moves closer to me, only to be viciously flung back into the wall. Sorry! I can't even get the words out. Sho! Shinji immediately r runs to help Sho up. I can't stop it. I can't do anything. My body is frozen in place as a green mist like flames surround me. Whoa, guys. They swirl and wildly dance around me. The three of them stand in front of me, just out of reach of the flames. This is bad, really bad. If we don't stop her, she might blow up, blow up half the school. If we're lucky, that is. We could freeze her. That should stop the meltdown without harming her too much. We're not freezing her. You have no idea what that would actually do. It's all I can do to contain myself while they argue. He's right. Her magic is wild. There's no telling how it would react if we even attempted to freeze her. Well then, you suggest something before we're all dead. <laughs> oh god. He turns to show. 
I thought you were supposed to watch her. I told Professor Kazama I would do a better job. I don't... Tatsuya, no. Clearly, I was right. Your incompetence is about to get us all killed. Hmm. That's enough, Tatsu. Blaming others won't get us anywhere. We need... Oh. Something behind me draws their attention. I can't move to see, but then I feel a slight sting in the back of my shoulder. Almost immediately, I begin to feel sleepy. What? My body relaxes all on its own, and the flames go out as if they were never present. As I fall, I'm caught in someone's arms. I look up to see the smiling face of Takumi. Awesome. I got you now, don't worry. My vision starts to go dark. I can hear the sound of rush, rushed footsteps coming closer. Thanks for that, Takumi. I can take her now. She's my responsibility. Well, okay. My, but my body suddenly feels like it's floating. Something, no someone feels warm, so warm and relaxing. Is show holding me? I start to give in to the gentle warmth. All my worries seem to float away. All the bad feelings I had start to disappear when faced with this comforting feeling. So are you going to tell me what the hell that was about? That's the last thing I hear before my consciousness finally slips away and I pass out. Chapter 2, Into the Flames. Into the Flames. Okay. Okay. Mm. I open my eyes, staring at a strange view for the third time in the past week. This looks sort of familiar, though. You're in the classroom. You're in the classroom, princess. I lie still in what seems to be a cot and calmly try to assess my surroundings. It's then I realize that I've been hearing two equally familiar voices. Look, I know everything. I already did before, but now I can prove it. You can't honestly expect that I'm just going to forget what I saw, Professor K. I hear a heavy sigh and turn my head to see Takumi talking to Hikaru. No, not with you, Takumi. <laughs> no, not with you, Takumi. It'd be a hell of a lot easier on me if you did, though. Princess, are you awake? Ah, uh, Professor. Sho, your voice is... I turn my head towards Sho's voice, who, apparently, who's, who was apparently sitting on the other side of me the whole time. How do you feel? How do you feel? Before I can respond, Takumi and Hikaru's conversation stops. They both walk over to me. <laughs> are you okay? Are, are you okay? Yeah. I try to sit up and both Sho and Takumi rush to help me up. Ah! Next choice, next choice. Okay. Um... Nah, just let them help. <laughs> I give everyone a smile so they help me sit up. Yeah, that's right. Help me up. Let's go. Thanks. It's the least I can do to help. I'm glad to help you anytime, princess. I swing my legs over the side of the bed and try to recall what happened to put me in this position. There's a bed in the middle of the classroom? At distinct, at distinctly, re at distinctly remembering slamming, that that's weirdly phrased. Okay, at distinctly rem remembering slamming a certain someone against the wall, I gasp and look at Show. Okay, never mind. Oh my God, Show! I'm so sorry. Are you okay? Huh? For what? Oh. That's okay. It wasn't your fault. Besides, I'm tougher than that. As he smiles. So tough, you're practically in tears when Princess was unconscious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like Takumi. Not cool, Taku. Am I wrong then? Wasn't it from the pain of being slammed against a wall, or... Could it be from something else? Because you were in love with me. Hmm. That's enough, Takumi. Show take Wolfhorn home and talk to her about what we've discussed. 
Takumi, let's continue your discussion at my desk. Princess, I hope you feel better. Hikaru turns on his heel and walks back over to the desk. Takumi, looking exactly like a child that, that that's just been scolded, glances back at Sho. Sorry, Sho. Hope you feel better, princess. Takumi runs off to catch up with the professor, leaving Sho and I alone. It's really late. Oh, wait, oh. It's really late, so we better get going. Okay. We're one we're once again walking down the street to my apartment. But this time it feels like we're both in our own worlds. Ah, bro. Bro, hold on, bro. Bro. Okay, there we go. My parents' situation weighs heavily on my mind and I feel incredibly helpless. Well, you did just lose your mom and now you have a dad who's looking for her. I glance at Sho. He seems bummed out about something too. I decide to break the silence. We're making a habit out of this, huh? Huh? The whole me blowing up, passing out, and you having to walk me home after thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we are. You'll walk along the darkening street in silence for a while. Then I decide to start, then I decide to try to start up a conversation again. Ugh. I, I'm sorry. We both, we stop and stare at each other. Ah, <laughs> they're all laughing, that's cute. A few moments pass before we burst into laughter. You know, where I went to high school, you'd owe me a soda right now for that. Really, huh? Well, I guess I have to buy you one sometime. You could tell. <laughs> oh, I see the romance forming. Ah, oh, I'm getting blushy. You could tell me about your high school then too. Sounds good. But what were you apologizing for? I'm the one who. I'm the one who should be sorry. I hurt you. It's just that I totally failed you. I'm supposed to be helping you, so that doesn't happen. But I was sitting right there and I couldn't do anything to help. I think Tatsuya is right. You should have picked someone else. It's not your fault. It's not your fault, Sho. That's... That's not your fault, Sho. It was just... I paused, wondering how the hell to explain my family situation. I got a text message that really upset me. No one would have predicted that. And besides, Tatsuya and Shinji couldn't help either. Well, I guess that's true too. Actually, how did you guys stop me? It was Takumi. He he had to use a, use a tranquil tranquilizer dart just to get close to you. Whoa, guys. Whoa, okay. I'm sorry you got hurt. What the he what the hell was he carrying a tranquilizer dart for anyway? I instinctively ch touch his <laughs> I instinctively touch the shoulder where I'd felt the sharp but brief pain. Oh dang. So is Takumi just a human then? Yeah, and he was the only one who could help you. Seeing how pain show looks, I stifle my curiosity about Takumi and put on a smile. But I want to know about Takumi's special... Okay. You were, the, you were there to take care of me as soon as you could. And you were there when I woke up. And it was very comforting. Why are you looking away, princess? You're flirting! Okay. So, thanks. Oh, well, good. I'm glad I could be helpful in some way. Oh, I almost forgot. Shinji apologized about having to leave before you woke up. He and Tatsuya both had work. And Professor K said you had to start taking supplementary classes. 
So you're already all signed up for some classes starting tomorrow. Ah, wink. They're all just winking in this game. Oh, all right then. It's pretty sudden, but I guess considering what happened, I shouldn't I shouldn't be surprised. We arrive at my, we, we arrive at my apartment just then and Sho looks at me. It's pretty late, so I got to get going. But thanks for everything you said. I'll text you later, okay? Okay, thanks for walking me home. With a single wave, Sho jogs off into the night. Into the night. I walk into my apartment feeling much more positive than I did this afternoon. It's the next morning, okay. <laughs> I'm staring bleary-eyed at an email that I completely that completely changes my plans for today. Normally I only have one after one, normally I only have one early afternoon class, but now you have been added to control and focus 0032 A Arden, theoretical magical studies with Hiriyama, and then practical magic application, Kazama. Oh bro, we have some private classes with K Professor K. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Ugh. I shove my face into my pillow and let out all my let out all of my frustrations into it. I usually love school, but come on, even I need a break. I lift my head up and glare at nothing. Thanks a freaking lot, Professor K. But but we like Professor K. As frustrated as I am, I know that I need these classes too. I couldn't even get to sleep for hours last night. I was so scared. I sigh and push myself up. I reread the email and notice that there's a class called Practical Magical Magic Application. It's it's with Professor Kazama, exactly. A vivid flashback of Hikaru throwing a spear of light at me fills my mind and a creeping sense of dread crawls up my spine. Oh god, he wouldn't, would he? Now that I know that Hikaru was never trying to hurt me, only trigger my power. Huh, okay. But would he do that again? What if I can't do anything he has to, and then I... The memory of hanging suspended as my powers run wild, flinging show aside like it was nothing. It's all I can see. When I think of that, I get so terrified that I feel like I'm going to start panicking all over again. No, no, that would be completely counterproductive. I just need to calm down and try to figure out how to control these powers in the first place. That gives me a... That gives me an idea. I slowly, shakily hold a hand out like I saw Hikari do before. He, he, I inhale. No, control. I need to be calm or else. No, just focus on what you're trying to do. I hold my hand out and after a few moments realize I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I'll just have to do my best to figure it out while I'm here, while I'm there. Hikaru will be a lot more careful now, I'm sure. I think anyway. I sigh heavily and get out of bed. It's late afternoon. I trudge along the most empty base mostly empty basement, not at all looking forward to my next class, practical magic application. I'm looking forward to this class. Um, I manage to learn a bit in, in control and focus, mostly because it's still the beginning of the year. Everything was focused on just breathing correctly, but I couldn't summon anything. That's okay, princess. Theoretical magic studies was definitely way over my head, but it did at least give me some good information about magical limits. Apparently everyone is born with a certain amount of potential. I wonder what mine is. I bet it's like exceeding, exceeding off the, ch off the roof. But now I've got to be clueless in yet another class. I grit my teeth. I'm not the type to have no idea what's going on in class. I work very hard so I don't have to feel that way, but here it's like I'm totally out of my element. Hey, princess. I look towards the voice at my side, completely startled out of my thoughts. Takumi! What's up? What? Why are you here? I thought you weren't, um, um. I try to think of how to say it and make it vaguely magical hand motion. Okay. 
Takumi laughs. Really? You think so? Could I pass for something not human? I looked Takumi over carefully. Well, yeah, plus there's, there was that thing yesterday. Oh, right, that. Sorry about that. I didn't really, I didn't, I really didn't want to hurt you. No, it's okay. I'm really glad you were able to stop me before anything happened. So, as to for what? <laughs> so, as for why I'm here, I managed to convince the, convince the, an, ad, <laughs> I, I, okay. Get the stuttering out, get the stuttering out, okay. I managed to convince the administration to let me attend classes normally only supernatural students would attend. Oh! Oh, you're not, you're not magic, Takumi? Professor K helped out a lot with that. I think back to how frustrated Hikaru looked yesterday. Hikaru seems like he wouldn't be the type to be pushed around so easily, but why does Takumi want to sit in anyway? A thought strikes me then, as I remember that he randomly had a tranquilizer dart, dart on him. Maybe Takumi's actually kind of scary. <laughs> we stop in front of the classroom I was headed to, and Takumi pushes open the door for me. I'm being allowed to sit in today while they get me all officially set up. Since we're both new, want to sit together? Uh, sure. Ooh, the scenery outside looks different. I walk past him to the classroom and he follows me. As we walk up the steps, I notice that there's a different view than the first time I was in Professor Kazama's class. Yeah, it's like a starry night. Is that all done by ma is that all done by magic? Will I be able to do something that like that one day? I see someone in orange waving to me enthusiastically. I'm confused to see him in what I thought was a beginner's class, but I decided not to ask for now. Sho, what 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 are you doing here, Sho? Hey, hey guys, what's up? Hey man. <laughs> Takumi, Takumi sits next to Sho and gestures for me to sit on the other side of him. Sho leans over to look at me. How are you feeling? Pretty good, thanks. I nervously wait for Sho to mention what happened yesterday, but he never does. Professor Gazama walks in then, and after putting his things away, begins the lecture. I hope everyone's doing well. Today we're going to continue the subject of elemental magic. I open my laptop and prepare to take notes. Elemental magic is one form of magic that's powered and drawn from the elements of the earth itself. There have been cases of people with especially power, powerful auras utilizing elements outside of the earth. Whoa. But since this is a remedial class, we won't be covering that. There are many element there are many elements magic users can wield in a variety of different ways. Since we talked about hydrokinesis last week, today we'll be talking about its other form. Cry cryokinesis, commonly referred to as ice. Oh, cool. During the lecture, Hikaru goes over what... Oh, Syro! Oh my goodness, guys. Syrokinesis is, and some of the purposes it can be used for. Towards the end of the lecture, I could swear I can hear faint voices coming from outside the door. Ice can even be an effective weapon in battle, and one of the largest families of half-dragons have utilized it, utilized it this way for centuries. Yukimura... Hiriyama, would you come in? Wait. We all look towards the door that ha that opens and if <laughs> wait, we all look toward the door that opens and in walk the two men as if they'd just been waiting outside. Rumors spread throughout the classroom. Huh? Wait. <laughs> Are they dragons? Sho, Sho leans over and gla glances at Takumi and I before whispering. I bet you anything those two have been arguing again. I know, it's hilarious. I wonder what they've- I wonder what they're even here for though. Cause they're gonna be magic dragons. Okay. Hikaru continues, ignoring our whispers. Sh Shinji and Tatsuya are from my advanced classes, but they agreed to do a demonstration for us here today. Of ice magic? 
Tatia? Tatia steps forward and grabs his left forearm near his elbow with his right hand. Okay. <laughs> he closes his eyes for just a moment before running his hand over his arms. I hear a faint crackling sound from where I sit on the edge of my seat. I don't realize what he's done until I see the falling mist from his arm. I quickly examine him and see Tasia's covered his left arm with sparkling ice. Oh, interesting. There's also a blade that juts There's also a blade that juts far past his fist that looks razor sharp. I can't help it when a gasp escapes my mouth. This is one example of cyrokinesis applied for use in battle. Tatsuya has effectively covered his arm in incredible hard ice to act both as armor and as a weapon. Before we move on to the next demonstration, does anyone have any questions? Still amazed at the side before me, I raise my hand. Yes, Wolfhorn? Um, from what I understand, this is the most peaceful period of time there's been so far. Why are you- oh, okay. Oh, wait. Why would a supernatural being need to learn to fight? There are whispers throughout the class following my question. Takumi starts whispering to me. Uh, <laughs> Looks like you've just outed yourself as being a complete newbie. What? How? It's true that monsters no longer freely roam the land and supernaturals have opted to hide themselves as much as possible in today's world. But the fact is that there are still plenty of reasons to learn to use your powers to defend yourself. From barroom bra brawls to supernatural wars, supernaturals are still people and they're always going to have disputes. Hikaru sighs and suddenly looks very tired. I wish it wasn't that way, but it is. So that's why you're here. To help you gain mastery of your new power so you can defend yourself. I'm taken aback by Hikaru's speech. I sense I've struck a nerve, and I feel like an idiot for even asking such an obvious question. It's okay, princess, you're there to learn. It's fine. It is fine. I'm feeling completely embarrassed when I feel a warm hand on mine. Ah! I look up and see that Sho's reaching over. Oh, okay. Reaching over to Kumi. Oh, wait. Oh, no. He's reaching over to Kumi to hold my hand. Okay, yeah. Okay. Sho. Don't, don't worry about it. Professor K is known for getting a little emotional sometimes. And he knows you don't you don't know about this stuff. Thanks. <laughs> Can you guys maybe not do that kind of stuff right now? Takuma, you're awesome. And pay attention to the lecture. Shinji is about to do something super cool. Uh, sorry. Sorry. We quickly drop each other's hands and I turn my attention back towards Shinji. Alright guys, something weird happened to my computer, but I think it's a great time to end this episode. Next episode, we'll find out what is Shinji's power, what he's going to demonstrate for us. So until then, I'll see you guys soon. Bye!